Hey guys, how are you? It's great to be back for Rock Solid on a Sunday. We've not done any of these videos for the past couple of weeks, so it's really great to be back. Why don't you drop a comment uh, below this video letting us know how you're doing, what you're up to, how are you using this video, what does church look like for you today? My name is John, if you don't know me, and uh, we're going to have a blast today. So let's kick off with a game. We love a game, don't we, in rock? This game is called Telephone Pictionary. A little bit like Pictionary, but with a twist, you'll see. Um, so what you need to do is you need to have a piece of paper and a pen. So first of all, you will need to come up with a phrase. So everyone's going to do this at the same time. You will come up with a short phrase and you're going to write that on the top. So for example, it could be something as simple as the girl loves the frog. So once you've come up with your phrase, you write that on. So for example, I'm going to write monkey business. You write that on right at the top and then you fold it over so that no one else can see what you've written. Just like that. And then once you've done that, you pass it to the person next to you. They will pass you theirs. Um, so then you have a new piece of paper which has been folded over. What you need to do is, without anyone else seeing, unfold the piece of paper so you can see what the previous person wrote and then you're going to draw a picture interpreting that phrase. So I might have a go doing that. Okay, that's a quick one. And then you fold it over again. So now you should have two folds. And then you pass that to the person next to you and you take the other one. And then, hopefully you're getting the hang of it now, you keep going like that. Unfold the most recent fold so that you can see the picture. And you're going to alternate between writing a phrase and drawing a picture. So, since that last one was a picture, you're going to write a phrase that you think represents that picture. Now, you don't know what the original phrase was. And you're not supposed to know, so don't go looking. But you have to write a phrase that you think sums up that picture. Once you've done that, give it a right, give it another fold, like that, and then pass it on, and then receive. And so you're going to alternate between writing a phrase and drawing a picture. Now, to make it a little bit clearer, I've got an example. This is one that my friends Alex and Melody and Emily did earlier. They started off with the phrase monkey business. I think it's a good one. And then someone drew a picture of a business monkey. And then... Someone wrote the phrase, stop monkeying around, because they thought that represented the picture. And then the next picture was stop monkeying around. So hopefully you get the idea now. Um, it's a game of interpretation and captioning. Why don't you have a go in your groups um, with that now whilst we pause the video. Fantastic work, great game. Hopefully you all understood how to play the game properly. If not, I hope it was fun. Now, shall we read from the Bible together? I'm gonna to read the passage um, and you can follow along if you like or you can wait until I've read it and then read it for yourself in the pause afterwards. We are reading Luke chapter seven, verse one to 10. I hope you're sensing a theme by the way with these videos. This series is called Jesus and we're going through the book of Luke and now we're on to chapter 7 so verses 1 to 10 and it says when Jesus finished saying all these things to the people he went to Capernaum there was an army officer who had a servant who was very important to him the servant was so sick he was nearly dead when the officer heard about Jesus he sent some Jewish elders to him to ask Jesus to come and heal his servant the men went to Jesus and begged him saying the officer is worthy of your help. He loves our people and he built us a synagogue. So Jesus went with the men. He was getting near the officer's house when the officer sent friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself because I am not worthy to have you come into my house. That is why I did not come to you myself. But you only need to command it and my servant will be healed. I too am a man under the authority of others and I have soldiers under my command. I tell one soldier go and he goes, I tell another come and he comes. I say to my servant do this and my servant does it. 
When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, I tell you, this is the greatest faith I have found anywhere, even in Israel. Those who had been sent to Jesus went back to the house where they found the servant in good health. So if you haven't read along with me already, why don't you pause the video now and have a read for yourself and think about the questions that are gonna pop up on the screen. That was a pretty amazing story and we see such a strong faith in the uh, officer, don't we? And I wonder what you think Jesus means when he says, uh, this is the greatest faith that I have found. Uh, we're going to come back to that in a minute. But first, let's go through this passage together. So this bit comes right after where we left off two weeks ago in our last video. Uh, Jesus had just been preaching a big sermon um, to crowds of people. And he's just finished, I don't know if you remember, talking about the uh, builders um, building um, their houses on firm foundations. So this comes straight after there. Jesus is traveling to a town called Capernaum and that is where this Roman army officer is living. This officer um, had a servant who was working for him and he was not well at all. The passage says he was nearly uh, on the point of death. So what did the officer do? Well he sent some people off from his house to meet Jesus and ask him to come and heal the servant. Um, and even though he'd never met Jesus before, he knew that Jesus was special, that he was able to perform miracles and do these amazing healings. So um, they asked Jesus, the people that he sent asked Jesus to come and heal the servant. Um, and they're telling him what a great guy the officer is and how he deserves um, uh, Jesus' help. So he comes along to the officer's house. But before he gets there, the officer sends more people to meet Jesus, to intercept him. Uh, and look at what the officer tells them to say to him. Lord, don't trouble yourself because I am not worthy to have you in my, into my house. And then he says, but you only need to command it and my servant will be healed. The text says that Jesus was amazed by this guy's faith and the servant was healed. So why don't we have a little pause now and have a chat about what faith means. I think this passage is uh, it's just great on many levels, really. Uh, there are about four points that I want to draw out um, for you guys um, that I've been thinking about when I read it. Now, the first thing to note is that Jesus is a healer. That's what we see in the passage. That's what Jesus is primarily there to do in the text. We believe that Jesus has divine power to do miracles and heal people who need it. And I'm not talking about healing um, through treatment like a doctor does, but this is supernatural, miraculous healing. Um, and Jesus offers that healing to us too. If we need any kind of physical or emotional healing or any other kind of healing, Jesus offers that to us and he's able to help us. And not only that, but God gives us the power to heal other people who need it. So that's why we, see, we still see miracles today um, that happen when people get healed through us praying to God today. And then the second point from the passage that I wanna draw out is that Jesus is for everyone. So this officer that we read about, he wasn't a Jew, he wasn't part of the same social or cultural heritage, the same group as Jesus or the Jews. In fact, he represented the opposite. He was a Roman army officer. He was part of the stronger, the conquering power. So in the eyes of many of the Jews at the time, he was the enemy. So most of the Jews there probably wouldn't really have liked him. And yet Jesus still offered his healing to him, his healing power. Jesus is for the outsider. And the officer demonstrates faith that some of the insiders didn't even have. And then thirdly, the officer recognizes Jesus for who Jesus is. He sees that Jesus is special and that he has a special relationship with God. And even though he never met Jesus because he didn't even get to the house, 
he understood that Jesus was able to answer his prayer, even though he wasn't physically with him in the same place. And so Jesus was amazed by this guy's faith. And then finally, and this is my key takeaway for you guys, is that the offer didn't have to do much. He just trusted Jesus. What's important isn't the strength of his faith, it's who he puts his faith in. And it's the same for us today. The same is true. It doesn't matter how we feel. Um, it doesn't matter how we feel about our relationship with God and how that's doing or the confidence that we might have or might not have in situations in our life turning out the way that we'd like them to. What's important is that we trust God throughout. In the book of Hebrews, in the New Testament, it says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, an assurance about what we do not see. And in Proverbs, which is in the Old Testament, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't depend on your own understanding. It's not the strength of our faith that's important. It's who our faith is in. So why don't you have a uh, few moments now to think about the questions on the screen. Great, shall we pray now? Why don't you uh, find a partner or a little group or if you're by yourself, then you can pray this by yourself. You might want to do it more creatively. Maybe you want to take a piece of paper and a pen or some other crafty way of praying because God hears our prayers no matter what method we use to communicate them to him. But let's pray about um, these three things that are linked to the passage. Is there anyone or any situation in your life that you know needs Jesus' healing? That's the first thing. And then the second thing, who in your life do you want to have a relationship with Jesus or a better relationship with Jesus? Who is there in your life that is like that Roman officer who could have a relationship with Jesus? And then thirdly, pray that God would help you to trust him better. Sweet. Uh, it's been great to go through today's video with you guys. Uh, I'm praying that uh, God will help you trust him more and more and that you would put your faith in Jesus uh, no matter what situations you go through in life, just like we saw the officer do in the passage. This week, why not write down uh, some practical ways that you can live out your faith and push yourself to go for it this week, to do them. Um, and it'd be really great if you actually keep that list so that you can physically remind yourself to do that this week. So just go for it. But that's it for today. Uh, it's been great. I hope you're doing well um, and uh, that you've enjoyed today. Uh, we're going to see you next week. Bye.